What's up YouTube, Drew here and you are not in my shop but outside of it on this beautiful day with my parts car. This is a 2000, I think it's a 6, 2006 Toyota Prius, doesn't matter, it's going to apply to the 2004 through 2009 model years and I wanted to finally explain to you guys the cooling system in this. So I chose a crashed car because believe it or not it helps us see some things that we wouldn't be able to see on one that wasn't completely obliterated. So first and foremost, you have a gasoline engine. It's the 1NZ, that's 1 Nancy Zebra FXE, Foxtrot X-Ray Echo. And it's basically just the Toyota 1.5, but, you know, modified for use in a hybrid with the Atkinson cycle head. So that, of course, is a place that coolant goes. It also goes into the heater core, which you can't see, but take my word for it. It's inside the dashboard in the car. And basically what a heater core is, it's like a radiator, but the, um, you know, the, the, the hot coolant that goes through it is used to heat up the cabin of the car. You then, of course, got a radiator, which is here in front of the car, and that's where hot coolant goes from the engine. Uh, there's what's called a thermostat. When that uh, gets hot enough, it opens and it lets the coolant inside the engine that's really hot exchange places with the coolant inside the radiator to cool down. And then, of course, the thermostat closes because it's been exposed to cold coolant that when heats up, it opens again and the entire process repeats. Now, everything I've just told you is common to my convertible to this Camry to a you know um, I think you know heater cores go way back into the 1920s or possibly earlier my 1950 Chevy even came with you know a radiator a heater core and an engine obviously the heater core was an option in 1950 point is there's no rocket science yet but on this particular car, this Prius, with USA specifications, it's important to keep in mind the Japanese ones don't have the part I'm about to talk about next, and I don't believe the European ones do either. We are going to pull back this guy, ideally, and maybe we're not. But anyways, right inside here, um, let's see if you can see it, back inside, uh, I have videos on the topic underneath the inverter. Right in there is what's called a three-way coolant valve, and that allows this system to be diverted into this guy, which is not supposed to be hanging out and smashed. It's supposed to be tucked up underneath this fender behind the front corner of the bumper. And what that is, to give you an idea of its size next to my hand, that is literally a thermos. Uh, it's just like one that you'd store, you know, super coffee in, in that it keeps coolant particularly hot. So what the car is able to do when you turn it off, it's able to divert coolant that's hot from this system here, the normal system, through that three-way coolant valve into that thermos. Take my word for it, I have burned my hands after letting one of these cars sit for like six hours. Uh, that does a very good job of keeping coolant warm. Now, why is that there? Well, when you start the Prius, when you turn it back on after it's been sitting for a while, it pumps that hot coolant into the engine, which helps warm it up quicker. The advantage of doing that is when an engine's cold, it can't run on the normal 14.7 uh, parts air to one part fuel. It needs a much, much richer or more fuel, less air uh, mixture. So maybe it's nine parts air to one part fuel or say, for example, it was, you know, 7.35 parts uh, air to one part fuel. That means it's using twice exactly in that example, twice as much fuel to run to idle or run whatever than it would be when it's warm. So the sooner you, uh, sooner you warm it up, the less fuel you're using. And by the way, when you're in that rich condition, because the engine's cold, all that extra fuel is really just going out the tailpipe and hurting the environment. So that is the purpose of the coolant thermos. There's a relay for your information. I'll show you right there. It's, uh, it says underneath coolant heat, uh, coolant heat storage water pump right there. And that relay, you can, I'm gonna pull it out for you if I can with one hand. The uh, top two terminals there, you can actually jump those with a jumper and get that, uh, the water pump that's inside that guy to cycle. And you could use a scan tool to actuate that three-way coolant valve for the bleeding process. So we've covered, you know, a hundred years of history, how an engine is cooled with a radiator. 
So um, now, and of course, we've covered the three-way coolant valve that sits underneath here. Uh, I do have videos. There's going to be a bunch of videos linked in the description that have to do with working on the cooling system of these cars. So make sure you watch that. You know, it's not just about explaining things on this channel. It's also about doing them. But way under there where you can see it. But way underneath the inverter is that three-way coolant valve. And just when you thought we're done, we are not. So you've learned about this standard. This would apply, you know, going back over 100 years, the standard setup in a car, uh, the radiator, the heater core, and the engine, and the thermostat, and how they work. I didn't mention, but it, it should be implied that there's a pump that makes that all happen called a water pump. Um, which is driven either by the serpentine belt or the timing belt or in some really rare cases like Ford and Mazda uh, come to the top of my head driven by the timing chain. Um, so that's standard. The Obviously the, uh, the thermos and the three-way valve, that's you know Prius specific. But we have something again that is special to the Prius and that is the electric side. So the inverter uh, which converts electricity from the massive, I think it's like close to 300 volts. I should know off the top of my head because I've worked on these batteries enough. But, you know, there's 28 cells, uh, 28 DC cells that make up a second gen Prius battery that are between, you know, we'll say 6.5 and 9.25 volts each. Um, you know, ideally they're somewhere around 8 volts uh, times 28. You know, there's a lot of voltage that's, um, you know, this directs it. Uh, you know, basically the, uh, the power split device, that voltage makes the car go. Uh, there's electricity being generated in that power split device or transaxle and going back to the battery. And then also this guy acts as an alternator and creates the 14 point whatever volts uh, that the 12 volt system of the car runs on. So that needs to be cooled as well. There's a little electric water pump. Again, make sure to scour the description of this video for other really good videos because I show you guys how to change that guy without taking the whole car apart. A lot of people think you gotta pull the headlight and the bumper and all that jazz. I show you how to do it without doing any of that. It's actually an easy job. Uh, and if that pump goes, it will disable the car. But that guy pumps coolant uh, to this reservoir and uh, into the uh, inverter and the transaxle. If you ever want to change that fluid, drain it all out, you actually drain it through the transaxle. Uh, and there is, by the way, a separate portion of the radiator that that is cooled in that is completely separate. If you were to, and please do not ever do this, you know, Toyotas use Toyota coolant, use Toyota coolant. Um, it's the pink super long life. But say, for example, you were to put, you know, drain this all and use Honda's blue coolant probably wouldn't hurt anything. It's good coolant, but just, please don't do it. Um, you know, if you were to put blue coolant on the engine side and leave it pink, you wouldn't get, you know, purple. It, it uh, They're totally separate systems, even though they use uh, the same radiator. Yeah, just like a radiator in some cars has a cooler for the engine oil or the power steering or the transmission or all three, that doesn't mean that it, they mix with each other in the coolant. Same thing here. The Prius's radiator cools this side of the cooling system without mixing it with the other side. So that is basically the skinny on how these work. Uh, it is a very complicated cooling system compared to a regular car. There's a lot you need to know about it. You don't just, you know, drain this out to fix something, fill it and head down the road. You've got to make sure you get the air out of everything that's going on here. So uh, hopefully I didn't lose you guys because of using a crashed car. I just thought it was easier because I can show you more like that. Um, namely the uh, the thermos, the storage thermos there. But I really hope this was educational for you and helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the internet know it's good content and it recommends it to other people who want to learn about these amazing cars. And by the way, if you're not subscribed and you just dig the fact that, you know, that, that one over there is, um, that black one's going to be ready soon. It just had to get some cosmetic cleaning done to it. I, at one point, was moving about 50 of these a year from the, the you know, the southeast United States up to Rochester where they've all been rusted out for a long time now uh, and, and you know it's it's a blessing to people here to get rust free cars so that's what I was doing a little bit less of them nowadays but uh, still working on them every single day and trying to give you guys as much content as possible so if you dig that please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel turn on notifications and one last time make sure to watch all the videos in the description of this one because there's some good content there on the cooling system so hey listen I'm Drew if I could fix it you could fix it hang in there if you're working on something God bless you take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.